Hey all, welcome back. So we got a new article, check this out. Uh, at the Smithsonian, the nation's museum, it's all Darwin all the time. And this is the, I think the world's dumbest museum. Check this out. And this is the propaganda um, that kids and people get fed uh, all the time. I actually went to um, a similar museum in New York. It was really awesome, a lot of cool things there, um, but it's just, it's all propaganda. It's just all about evolution and doesn't take creation or anything into, uh, into fact. So check this out. Darwin everywhere all the time. That was the impression we got on a visit to America's showcase of science, the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Recall that the Smithsonian is nothing less than the nation's museum. It belongs to us all, yet nowhere is there any hint of reputable biologists who hold different views, intelligent design, anything related, all ignored. And it brings me back to this scripture. I feel like every video I'm, I'm talking about this scripture. Um, it, it's, uh, it's 2 Peter 3. It says, knowing this first, uh, that um, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? So people are going to be, you're going to uh, read this here in just a second. People are going to be ignorant of um, Jesus' second coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. People are going to be ignorant of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world uh, that then was being overflowed with water perished and people are going to be ignorant of the flood and um, you have all this stuff and it goes against what the secular scientists say and that's what all this and like right right here it says all gets ignored problems with evolution even when acknowledged are swept under the rug by fine print captions offering simplistic excuses Thousands of video, uh, visitors coming in from the National Mall have no idea they will be indoctrinated into a multi-million dollar propaganda display. Here are some photos. The first thing people see is a massive elephant in the Great Rotunda. Along the base, visitors are shown how humans evolved with, with, uh, with elephants. And here it is. See, when you look at these pictures of, of humans, you've all seen the, 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 the progression of the video shows like an ape and then slowly progresses into a human. That happens nowhere. That's all in someone's, someone's mind and then they draw it down on paper. There's, there's no transitional fossils. There's no evidence at all that we evolved. I think it's, it's insane. And this is what kids are taught. And people, people argue with me all the time to say, oh, it's just a theory. And uh, they'll say that, but when all this, all for, through kindergarten, all through high school and college, it's taught as fact. I agree that they, they call it a theory, but it's taught as fact. And there's no other point of view that's taught here. Uh, and that's what indoctrination is. Um, see, in my view, either teach none or you teach both. So you should, if you're gonna teach evolution, you should teach creation science as well, and then let the kid think for himself. Um, but that's the issue with even these these museums. Uh, this I went to the similar museum in New York, and this museum is is gorgeous. You see the marble, saw the big um, all the fossils. It's it's awesome. But then they inject their religion in there, which is evolution uh, that everything's millions of years old. And that's what's frustrating. A right turn takes a visitor of Fossil Hall, where kids are naturally eager to see dinosaurs. And there it is. Darwin in deep time, but before seeing a single fossil, visitors must be introduced to Darwinian evolution in deep time. It is not a presentation about common ancestry by intelligent design, only the Darwinian view is presented. And here it is, and you can see the little spiral uh, staircase kind of going up, how we evolved and then got bigger and bigger, and all these things just kind of evolved over time. This is all that, that's, that's talked about. We know that is Darwinian because the only statue in Fossil Hall is one of Charles Darwin. No other biologist is on display, not John Ray, not um, Georges Cuvier, uh, Louis Agassiz, or uh, not Richard Owen, not Louis Pasteur, or any other great biologist or paleontologist um, who believed in a creator. And if you look at every major branch of science, it was created um, or there by someone who believed in creation. Look at this, um, Louis Pasteur. Just check this out. In past years, revisionist historians have been rewriting the worldview of Christians who have made some of the major discoveries in biology and medicine. So if you look at certain vaccines, I know that's super controversial right now, but all the um, different things, uh, aspects of biology, those were created by um, creationists. It appears that postmodern revisionists are rewriting history to support their agenda of a more secular explanation to science. The Judeo-Christian worldview is not politically correct in most universities. This is true regarding to past scientists such as Louis Pasteur, who believed in creation. According to reliable primary sources such as René Valéry uh, Rodeau, Pasteur's son-in-law, Pasteur's unique view and application of operational science gave him a significant advantage 
benefiting mankind in a number of critical areas. Shortly after Darwin published On the Origin of Species in 1859, Pasteur began to challenge the idea of spontaneous generation, the foundation of the evolutionary view on the uh, origin of life. Pasteur's simple but elegant swan-necked flask experiments not only put to rest the organic life from non-life idea, but also set the foundation for the law of biogenesis. Life only comes from life. The genesis of germs in hospital patients was the result of microbes having parents, not a result of spontaneous generation. And you can go on and read the rest of the article. Look at this one, uh, Louis Agassiz. Um, check this out. And here it is. This is what it comes down to. In the 20th and 21st centuries, the resistance to Darwinian evolution, his belief in creationism, and the scientific racism implicit in his writings on human uh, polygenism have tarnished his reputation and led to controversies over his legacy. And that's what it comes down to because it, it, it contradicts what Darwin said. And the thing with Darwin, um, as I think at point, he was like a, a Catholic priest or, or something like that. Um, and then he basically went on this island and he wrote this book and he was looking at these birds and he saw these birds had different beak sizes. And he says, oh, these, these just evolved. And that's where this whole theory comes from. And he says, oh, bird or fish evolved into land animals and land animals and the birds. And that's what this, this comes from is just these bird beaks. But if you read the book of Genesis, it says multiple times, I think 10 to 15 times that animals will bring forth after their kind. And so you have people with brown hair, blonde hair, black hair. You have people with blue eyes, brown eyes. These are just variations within the gene code. This isn't uh, evolution on a macro scale. The Bible tells us this will happen, but you've never seen um, a lion you know, turn into a giraffe or a human turn into a fish or something. That's a religion. If you wanna believe that, you can, but this is what's shoved down all the kids' throats is indoctrination. We're not educating kids, and kids, when they're very small, um, you know, they'll believe anything. So you got to be careful. Let's jump into here. Um, it's all Darwin and only Darwin everywhere in the museum. Smithsonian Magazine confirms this purpose. The quote is a unifying theme of the hall and centers around the idea that life on earth is forever changing, was changed in the past and will change again. That's also why a bronze statue of Charles Darwin sits at the center of the exhibition. With his book, notebook in hand, the sculpture of Darwin is seated on a bench and if he's just exhausted himself touring the show, sit down beside him and take a look at the open page of his journal. There you'll find recreated his first ever sketch that he made of his tree of life. See, it came from his imagination. He totally made this up. And I'll tell you what, the devil's doing a fantastic job uh, fooling people. And that's what he did. I think this is probably one of those dangerous things um, that's ever been created is, is the religion of evolution. It, it's, it's insane to me. With ancient creatures branching off to modern day animals, this was the a catalytic moment when Darwin realized with all certainty that all plants and animals are related. And even before Darwin's time, um, creation is what was taught. And then as soon as this comes out, um, the floodgates just opened and this is the only thing that's taught now. Mr. Darwin is staring up at a huge quote from the origin of species towering over visitors to Fossil Hall. It says, from so simply beginning endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being and evolved. A Darwinian lens. The dinosaurs are nicely displayed, but like everything in the fossil hall, they are interpreted through a Darwinian lens. What did they evolve from and what did they evolve into? It's a deep Darwin saturation experience. Another thing the museum promotes is our own connectedness to animals by Darwinian evolution. All the well-engineered features of our bodies are the result of chance over millions of years as we emerge from slime. <laughs> See, if you want to believe that, you can go ahead. This And this is this is what all the textbooks talk about, that uh, there's rocks there and it's rained over millions of years and formed into this ooze and over time it just e evolved in living organism. This is the junk that they teach your kids and this is what fires me up. Your body, here it is, your body is the result of more than 3.7 billion years of evolution. This display proclaims not most scientists thinks think so but it is so there it is the interactive panel let's see this is uh this is just a panel they show um it discusses a little bit more about evolution the interactive panel answers the questions including when did my lungs first evolve and this brings in the question um i don't know if you've heard of the term irreducible complexity and it, it just means that if you take one aspect um out of the body or the atmosphere or whatever, that the whole thing just shuts down. What happens if you take out your brain? You would die. What happens if, um, how do you breathe without lungs? How did that work? What about your heart? 
So if you take any of these components out, the whole thing just doesn't work. And that's a major issue and flaw with evolution is irreducible complexity. Just read about it more. When did the ability to walk on land first evolve? I just, I just can't imagine this taking my, my four-year-old into this museum. I, I would never take her. Um, in the, some, when I first went to the New York Museum, it was a couple years ago. She, she didn't really understand this yet. She would have been like one and a half, two years old. Um, but I'm going to show her both sides. See, the Bible says that God created everything in six days and um, the earth is 6,000 years old. I'm going to teach her that. And that way, if she goes in the school right now, she's in a private school, but if she ever goes to a public school, she'll at least know both sides. And I'm going to let her make that decision on what she wants to do. And I think that's what the way it should be. That's education. This is indoctrination. When did the head and census first evolve? This, this, this is what they teach. When did I get opposable thumbs to grasp small objects? When did my body become so symmetrical? Uh, so symmetrical? There's only one acceptable answer. Evolution. Children are fed the propaganda too. They will be drawn to this cute picture of a girl and monkey. Check out this picture here in just a second. Monkey, uh, cute picture of a girl and monkey rings as their parents read to them about our primate heritage. Humans are great apes. Our closest living relatives are uh, bonobos and chimpanzees with whom we share many traits. This statement is not followed up by any indication that human beings are exceptional. The message is clear. We are merely apes. <laughs> and here it is. So it's an ape swinging on a branch and then there's a, a child there just uh, swinging on a playset. The museum is an evolution theater more than a presentation of empirical, testable science. And that's what science is, supposed to be testable and observable. This is a religion and evolutionists and atheists get so mad at me when I call it a religion. It is a religion. You believe this. And if you want to believe this, you can, but just don't indoctrinate my kids doing it. The museum is an evolution theater, theater more than a presentation of empirical, testable science. This kind of propaganda is typical in most museums of natural history around the world today. Powerful audiovisual displays presenting only one side of serious philosophical and scientific issues is what we are up against. Next time, and this is the last part, next time we will look at how the museum deals with the Cambrian explosion. This should be interesting since this, uh, the Smithsonian is the uh, repository of 65,000 specimens of complex animals that Charles Doolittle Wellcott uh, discovered in the uh, Burgess Shale. Those fossils were later recognized as, a, as serious challenges to Darwin, Darwin's theory of slow, gradual evolution. Will the Smithsonian deal with them honestly? And I, um, I released a video last week too, just kind of talking more about evolution, but um, that's what this channel's for. It's just here to just expose the issues with evolution. I don't think enough people talk about this and they don't know how. So all I'm trying to say is, you know, even if you, you don't believe in the Bible today, all I'm trying to say is maybe a creator. Let's just start with a creator. Just, just get the, the brain going and the gears going in your head. Hey, maybe there is, there's a creator. If you look at this home, you would say, hey, something created this. You had the walls, the foundation, the concrete. If, if I took all this stuff and just sat it there for a million years, is it going to turn into anything? No, you have to have some type of builder. Um, and I would say the same thing with the earth. If you look at the spherical nature and um, the atmosphere and all these, these animals, um, how complex and beautifully designed they are, there had to be some type of creator. And that's the point that I'm trying to draw here. And there's a lot of flaws in evolution and not enough people talk about this. Um, and as usual, I like to end all my videos um, with this scripture. Um, if you're not a Christian, this is how you do it. Um, we, we talk about evolution. We talk about Bible topics. And um, that's, the, that's the point of this, this channel here. And Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you made it this far, this is, this is probably the most important part of this video. This is how to become a Christian. I thought, um, you know, because I was a good guy, I paid my taxes, had a good job, took care of my family. I feel like I'm a good father, maybe a, a decent husband. That's not what makes you a Christian. This is right here is how you do it. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says if, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And uh, don't take my word for it. Go, go read it for yourself. Uh, just grab a Bible. It's, it's Romans 10, 9, and 10. It's right here. And all you do, it's just a quick prayer. You say, hey, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe in your birth, your crucifixion, your resurrection. I just want you to come into life, take over, take over my sins. I want to be with you in heaven forever. And that's all you have to do. It's a simple prayer. And then I recommend it. Start growing. Go grab a Bible. 
Um, start with the, uh, the New Testament. You have the Old Testament, New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the first four Gospels. And I like starting with the book of John. It talks about his birth, his crucifixion, his resurrection, all the way to the beginning. And it'll answer a lot of questions for you. And then I also enjoy reading the book of Genesis. That Man, that's a powerful book. And a lot of people can't defend the book of Genesis. And that's what this channel is here to do, is just show the, the different point of view, that there's more than one view. And research it yourself. You might be skeptical. Um, go read a book uh, by Lee Strobel, Case for a Creator. Fantastic book. So that's it. That's all we're trying to do. And um, new videos come out every Monday. And if you haven't already, like, subscribe, share. It's the best thing you can do to get this channel growing. And we'll go from there. See you guys next week.